You know that joyous feeling you get when you discover a delicious local restaurant is located just like a few blocks from your hotel? Well, I didn't know this, but my hotel restaurant here supposedly has the best breakfast buffet in Japan. So let's go try it out. First impression, beautiful, elegant, Let's go scope out the food. This looks like a very specialized tea. I can't read that, but it seems really important. Spinach smoothie, I believe. I'm gonna stay away from that. Homemade yogurt drink and black soybean tea. Me and this buffet are on a blind date. I didn't know anything about it before I came here, and so far the impression has been fantastic. And the staff tells me this buffet is based on French and Japanese inspirations, and you can see, of course, a lot of baguettes, uh, croissants, but also a ton of traditional Japanese food. So today we are gonna eat the heck out of this buffet. To start off, something warm for my stomach. This is steamed rice, and I added some sort of um, soy sauce based soup in here, and a little seaweed. Oh, that's just what I needed. Yesterday, I think I ate half a cow, so I needed something a little soupy, a little light. It's sushi rice and just a very light soy sauce based soup. That was perfect. Beautiful starting point to my breakfast. Next, let's go with something a bit heavier. This is a stewed pork belly. Look how that glistens. Oh my god, totomo oishi. Is that a word? If not, whatever. That pork deserves its own made up phrase. Excuse me while I hit repeat on that. <laughs> That's like the Chinese hong shao rou. Mm. The soy sauce stewed uh, pork belly in Chinese, but it's, uh, it's a lot chewier. It's not as tender as that, but this has a great smoky flavor to it. Ah. And the fat liquefies as soon as it touches your tongue. That made me really happy. Let's go from heavy to light. Piece of simple cold tofu, little scallion, little ginger, little soy sauce. Mm. Silky soft, silky smooth. Good balance. Smoked fish. There was a lot of bones in that piece of fish. That caught me a little off guard. My bone removing kung fu it falls way short of other Chinese people. I mean, my parents tried to train me when I was a kid, but then as I grew, I just kind of forgo my training. And then I moved to the States and all the fish moves are removed for you. <sighs> Losing my touch. Bones aside, that's a great piece of smoked fish. And I went ahead and got another bowl of this uh, rice and soup. And I think this fish will go really good with it. Let me just put a couple pieces in. A little bit of this little bunch on fish as well. Happy bites, happy life. Simple miso soup with some daikon in there. Uh, that's the stuff. Mm. I've never had miso soup with daikon in there before, but daikon goes great with any soup. If you never had miso in Japan, you're missing out. This is way better than all that powder hot water stuff you typically get in the US. The soup is so flavorful, then you got that nice bite of daikon, and that brings a very refreshing texture and flavor to the soup. Finally, a little egg roll. I hope it's not sweet. I'm not ready for sweet yet, but a little cold egg omelet. Not sweet, not that flavorful as well. I feel like that needs something. That needs like a crispy element to it. Um, the scallions is not enough. Maybe some like preserved veggies would've been good with that. Just the drinks alone are so unique. I have here a couple of teas. Never had a soybean tea before. <laughs> Tastes like soybeans. Let's try this fancy tea. Oh, that is crisp. It's almost got like a citrusy element to it. Um, it's not sweet at all. This is definitely full on tea with no sugar, nothing else added, but it tastes a little citrusy. It's so clean and refreshing. It's almost like tea leaves fell into a mountain stream and you drink that. Favorite item on that round definitely goes to the pork belly. Round two. I've only uh, seen this omelet on Facebook. 
that just makes me smile because I think this is made with love. The outside tastes like a normal omelet. Then when you bite inside, it just filled with gooey, lovable eggs. And I saw the steak sitting there and I asked them hoping uh, it would be Kobe. They said it wasn't. If it was, I'd just be standing by the kitchen waiting for them to bring this out. Definitely not Kobe. So not used to um, chewy, really chewy, almost a bit tough piece of beef anymore after yesterday. This chicken and uh, some sort of cream sauce looks really interesting. I feel like this is some sort of Alfredo sauce. It's got a nice creamy flavor, but I, I just kind of feel meh about that dish because the chicken's a little tough and I feel like that sauce is a bit too creamy. Now, this is something interesting. They told me um, the French toast is what they're known for. Here it goes. Oh. Wow. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, that is, that is good. Let me, let me try a piece with no syrup and no jelly. That is delicious. They definitely... There's a lot of butter in that French toast, but hey, I, I'm not complaining. When I got the French toast, it's already been on the serving plate for a while, and as I was talking, it's also been sitting on my plate for about five to 10 minutes, so I kind of expected it to be pretty soggy, but this is still a bit crispy on the outside, but the, the essence is inside this French toast. When you bite into it, it's so moist and eggy and buttery that, oh wow. I'm not a big fan of French toast. Look, let me correct that. I'm not a big fan of, of regular French toast. You know, typically the French toast you get, it, it tastes good on the edges, but then the middle it just becomes this mushy, soggy mess. But the middle of this thing, although although it's soft, it's, it's still, it's, it's a bit gooey, but also flavorful. I'm gonna dip this in what looks like uh, kiwi jelly. First of all, that, that jelly is amazing. It brings a little tart to the French toast. That was a good bite. One of the best things I've had all day. I mean, it's only nine o'clock, but still. Next up, I toasted a couple pieces of bread because uh, what this hotel is really known for um, is these jars of jam. Well, I mean, the jam, but the jars are really good looking. And they sell this jam in the hotel lobby and they have it here on this buffet. So I wanna try a bunch of this jam. The labels were all in Japanese, so I don't know what a lot of them are. I'm guessing um, that's strawberry. I'm guessing that's apricot, uh, matcha. I'm thinking that is raspberry and that is maybe tangerine. Let's try some of the matcha. Oh, oh that's got a beautiful matcha flavor. Slightly sweet, not overwhelming at all. Buttery, creamy, that is just delightful. Let's try some of the strawberry. Really tart. I can tell it's definitely fresh, but not my favorite. Finally, a couple ones I can't identify. Mm, that was my favorite one. Dessert round. But before I do that, I, I noticed something I missed. It's like a little, I don't know, little poached egg. Mmm. I'm not really into runny eggs, but that's just yolky and delicious. This looks like a little um, a matcha bite with some cream and chocolate. Little matcha cake, and they have these tiny, um, crunchy chocolate balls inside. Cream was fresh. The matcha flavor wasn't too intense. I just feel like all the ingredients in that little little shot glass really complemented each other. This, I, I don't know what this is. This looks like a orange juice of, uh, I think, a little custard. Mm -hmm. Orange juice. <laughs> this is yogurt. If you guys never had uh, yogurt in Asia, it's a lot different than the yogurts in the States. Yogurt in Asia, at least Korea, Japan, and China, they're a little more sweet than they are tart. I love it, my favorite yogurt, but I never thought of putting uh, orange juice in it as well. Might have to do that in the future. Look at this, tiniest little macaroon baby. <laughs> that was not a good macaroon. The best part about that macaroon was his cuteness. A little flaky cake with strawberry. Hmm. Oh, I really dig that cream element tart of the strawberry, mixed together in your mouth. Crunchy, tart, sweet, sour, creamy, happy. Finally, a piece of matcha chocolate with what looks like a bunch of dry fruits inside. Mmm, that is delicious. I'm gonna give you guys the summary of my buffet experience up here in my room because they were getting really crowded down there. The wait time was an hour, people were trying to get in. And I'm there taking up a whole table covered with food, talking to a camera. So I thought I'd come up here, have a little privacy, and tell you guys what I really thought about that buffet. First of all, that buffet, 
is fantastic. I've said so many times on this channel that I hate traditional breakfast food. I hate it when I walk down to a hotel buffet, all I see are eggs, bacon, sausage, canned fruit, and some Cheerios. So even if I go down to a hotel buffet and it has stuff beyond all the typical things you see, I get really happy. But this one blows my happiness scale off the charts. Not only is it mainly traditional Japanese food, everything on the buffet is quality, from the desserts to the salads to the foods to the drinks itself. Favorite item on the buffet, if I had to choose, it's gotta be the French toast. I, I cannot even believe I'm saying this. Like I mentioned before, I don't even really like French toast. And if you guys are here, you gotta try their wide array of jams. They were unbelievably fresh, also not overly sugary, which I love. And then you got all this delicate dessert. Comparing this to my trip to Vegas, when I go to the Bacchanal dessert bar, I load up, after I eat, I just, I just wanna find a cave and hibernate. But the desserts here, they were not overly sweet, not overly buttery, and I feel like that's the theme of that whole entire buffet. Nothing is overly done. Everything was made just to amplify their own natural flavors. You know, I, I ate a lot at that buffet and this might be the first time in my life that I went into a buffet and didn't feel like being rolled out. Also the price, which I feel is incredibly, incredibly fair. 2200 yen plus tax, so comes out to about 2400 yen. That's only $20. And before you go, well, that's still a lot of money, it's 20 bucks. Keep in mind, if you go to a random, just random middle of nowhere Sheraton Hilton buffet, morning breakfast buffet, they're gonna charge you $14.99. And they're gonna serve you powdered eggs and crap from a can. So if you are ever in Kobe, you wake up really early and all the steakhouses are still closed, come to this buffet. You will not regret it. Like they mentioned to me, uh, this buffet I think was ranked at the top breakfast buffet in Japan four or five years running. And to me, this was like a blind date. I had no idea what this buffet was about. I just happened to book the hotel where this buffet was located. So it was like fate, or dare I say, serendipitous. As always guys, the info for this place is in my description box. And as always, if you wanna see what else I did in Japan besides eat, check out my vlog channel that's also down below. And if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. So until we eat again, see you later.